Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's first video, going to have a look at the weather next week's 10 days for today's first video, this will take us to around the 21st of June, so we're going into the second half of the month now uh, with the uh, week 10 day videos. We'll also have a look at CFS V2 for the next month, that takes us well into uh, the early part of July, uh, of course. So, pretty warm uh, again today, with plenty of uh, sunshine, we are going to see a bit of a change coming up over the next few days. Uh, can turn a little bit more unsettled, particularly so for the north and west. But I think we'll probably all get a little bit of rain uh, by the coming weekend. Um, and then how long does that uh, more unsettled interlude last? That's going to be the question that uh, we're going to have to answer uh, over the next few days. So um, I'll go on a video for you in a second. Just say a big thank you to our latest patrons. We've got two more. Uh, patrons for uh, Gazovid. So I've got to give a shout out to uh, Katrine uh, Baso and also to Richard Bennett. Big thank you to our latest patrons uh, for Gazovid. This is the Gazovid's Patreon page. So if you would like to become a patron uh, for Gazovid and donate a little bit of money uh, for us, all you have to do is come to this page and uh, I suppose you've got to set up a Patreon account if you haven't got one, and then you can uh, donate a little bit of money uh, to Gaz Weather Vids, um, and uh, that's going to really help us uh, with the uh, ongoing costs of the website. So big thank you to all of our patrons. So if I've got 13 patrons uh, now for um, Gaz Weather Vids, I'm going to leave the uh, link to our Patreon page in the description box here at YouTube, and also we link to it here at uh, Gaz Weather Vids, the website as well on all of the pages. Now, I've got one more funding option that I just started, so I'll just uh, talk to you about that. Um, this is our Gazworth, it's paypal.me uh, page. So um, this is very simple, uh, and you just, if you want to make a one-off donation uh, to uh, Gazworth, it's again, you just use your PayPal account. Most people have got a PayPal account uh, now, of course, and you um, come to this page. Again, I'll leave the link to our uh, Gazworth, it's PayPal dot me um uh, page in the description box at youtube also linking to this page as well from uh gazovis the website so you just come here put in the amount of money you would like to um donate to us and uh, again you just do that through uh your paypal account and a big thank you to everybody for their ongoing support for um gazovis it does make a big difference to the website we are primarily ads funded uh, and we'll be staying that way and we're going to keep all of the content completely free uh, at the point where you want it and need it so you're not going to have to pay for the content uh, we're not going to be going behind a paywall or anything like that but there are ongoing costs uh, particularly with having the websites uh, and of course there's ongoing costs in other uh, areas like time uh, uh, doing the videos so um, a big big thank you to everybody for uh, either becoming patrons of Gazov is all giving us a donation through um, PayPal. All patrons and all uh, donors through PayPal will get a shout out in the video. Uh, a thank you. So, um, again, big thanks to everybody for doing that. Right, so we'll get on with the uh, video. We're going to have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts for Penn State University website. We've got the ECMDF here on the top and the GFS is uh, on the bottom, 500 millibars, 8 pounds feet, is an area in atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure have been moved around by the jet stream running above. Blue extrapolates to low pressure, and uh, yellow, orange, and red extrapolates to high pressure. So the East Indian Earth in the 7 to 10 day time frame looks rather unsettled, with below average heights to the north and the northwest of the British Isles, above average heights from the Azores in towards central parts of Europe, and the flow of the jet is coming through across the Atlantic, Rather like that. So it does look pretty unsettled, pretty changeable there uh, with the ECMWF as we're going into the 7 to 10 day time frame, taking us, of course, beyond the middle part of the month. Now, the GFS is rather different and it's more anticyclonic. So we do have the area below average heights, but much weaker away to the northwest. And then we've got this area of above average heights, that's the Azores High, of course, but um, it's extending from the Atlantic into the UK and then into Central and Northern Europe. So this is sending the jet stream 
further north. There is still a bit of an influence from the jet stream, so there is still some changeable weather coming through, particularly to the north or the west. But the upshot with that is that um, there's more in way of dry and warm conditions compared to the east end of the earth, which does look rather uh, more changeable and rather uh, more cooler uh, as well. Uh, GFS temperature precipitation on so we're looking at Ballymena today. Someone's asked if we can have a look at uh, Ballymena. So the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Ballymena, and we can see that at the moment we're close to average. Uh, and we're going to stay generally on the warmer side of average over the next few days. But at the end of the week and into weekend, it does turn a bit cooler. We are going to get a little bit of a cool down coming up at the end of the week and into the weekend. But next week, the temperatures are lifting up again. Now, bear in mind, this is for Northern Ireland. So this is right next to the Atlantic Ocean in the northwest country. It's probably not all that representative for somewhere like London in the southeast. But saying broad ideas are, are, are the same uh, for all places really over the next couple of weeks. So we start off average to warm. We go cooler at the end of the week and into the weekend. And then next week, we see a recovery in the temperatures, temperatures starting to lift up once again. As far as precipitation is concerned for Ballymena, well, there's a lot of dry weather coming up over the next few days. But at the end of the week and into the weekend, we go into this more unsettled phase. And then beyond that, through into the second half of June, we have got those rainfall spikes coming through uh, for the northwest of the country. But down in the southeast, it probably be... Uh, more settled. Although, to be honest, that doesn't um, doesn't really uh, uh, sort of in, uh, imply, doesn't suggest that we are in for a pronounced spell of settled weather into the second half of the month. So maybe that idea from the GFS of ridging up the Azores high uh, in the second half of the month, maybe that um, is a little bit, was a little bit of an outlier within the operational uh, runs of the GFS this morning. Possibly it was. Service temperatures look like that for Balamina. So, uh, again, these undercut the temperature. So, this is suggesting at the moment around mid teens, but I think we need to be upper teens to low 20s uh, there. Overall, keeping at that sort of level, uh, maybe signs of a bit of a lift up in the temperature uh, as we go through to uh, the second half of June. Uh, perhaps. Temperature anomalies from the 11th through to the 19th of June are looking like that. Close to average. Uh, so not deviating too far from average. Maybe a little bit above for England and Wales and close to average Scotland and Northern Ireland, but not a big deviation anywhere. And so this is actually a cooler week uh, compared to many weeks that we've had recently, because um, over the past few weeks we have been uh, we have been experiencing a very large uh, warm anomaly uh, of around two degrees above average. So if we're going back to average in the week ahead or near average, then obviously that's a cooler uh, a cooler week compared to what we've experienced for quite uh, some time. And I think we will notice that, particularly by the time we get through to the end of the week. You will feel quite a quite a chill. It's not going to be particularly cold, but you will feel quite a chill at the end of the week compared to what we've had over the uh, past few weeks. Precipitation anomaly is a bit of an all-south split. So Scotland and Northern Ireland coming out close to average, a little bit wet and average for the far northwest. But England and Wales still coming out drier than average. They may trend a little bit more unsettled over the uh, next few days. Right, so this is how the GFS is looking for Thursday. Man, a bit wet and windy, particularly so for northwest parts of the country. It's been a long while since we've been able to say that. Uh, wet and windy weather coming in from off the Atlantic. But we have got... A little bit of wet and windy weather there on uh, Thursday. The rain will be very light and patchy when it gets down into the south and the east, though. Beyond that, into Friday and then the weekend. Well, on Friday, we do build up a little bit of a ridge again. So, fair amount of dry weather for Friday. But for Saturday, we're bringing this trough in from off the Atlantic. This could bring heavy showers, possibly even some longer spells, rain to many parts of the country. So, Saturday... Uh, might be quite a quite a cool and wet day, but then we go through to Sunday, and that low pressure is getting out of the way uh, for Father's Day, and we're ridging up the high pressure from the southwest again. The Azores High is starting to make its move, and so as we go through into the following week, actually we get more influence from the Azores. England away or settles down under this ridge, still a little bit more changeable for Scotland and Northern Ireland with that westerly wind. 
As we go to day 10, the Azores high remains quite influential. We saw it on the 500 millibar height anomalies at the start of the video from Penn State University with the high pressure from the Azores ridging up, particularly for England and Wales, bringing a lot of dry uh, fine and warm weather. Always more of a westerly wind for Scotland, so a little bit of showery rain coming through there. And into the extended range of the GFS, it continues to look very good, uh, really. So going up towards the end of the month now uh, with the extended GFS, Wednesday 27th of June, still a lot of influence from high pressure uh, and that would be bringing uh, lots of dry and very warm conditions towards the end of June if it uh, came off. Now, we know the East MDF is going to be more changeable, because we saw that on the 500 millibar height anomalies as well. So this is the ECM for Thursday. Again, wet and windy, especially so for the north and the west. Into the weekend, we bring this trough through on Saturday, which is going to bring widespread showers and then through to the start of next week when it's still wet and windy to the northwest we are ridging the azores high into france and just into the south of england so not too bad uh there and then as we go to the extended range looks a little bit more unsettled compared to the gfs it's not a surprise given what we saw on those 500 millibar height on so that's the chart for day 10 with uh still quite a bit of unsettled weather to the north it's not as unsettled in the south, but generally most places are still in more of a westerly flow there compared to what the GFS is doing by day 10. So it may be that the GFS is a little bit on its own with that idea of building up the Azores high very quickly and strongly through the course next week. It might be a little bit more unsettled through uh, next week than the GFS is showing. But we'll wait and see, and I'll keep you updated on that, of course, over the... Uh, next few days. Finally, just having a look at the uh, 500 millibar high tommy flow charts from the uh, ECM, uh, from the CFS V2, I should say, and uh, we find the, these have broke down to uh, weekly periods. Uh, so we have a look at um, the uh, period from the 11th through to 17th of June, with below average heights out to the northwest, above average heights out to west southwest and also to our east so the flow is coming through the atlantic rubber like that and then the jet is splitting a bit with some of the energy going down to our south overall a little bit more unsettled in the week ahead compared to what we've had just recently uh week two 500 mm of our high dominance look like that the 18th to the 24th of june with the cfs v2 shows that we've got above average heights to our east below average heights out to the northwest the flow and the jet we're going through something like that so a fair amount of dry and quite warm weather there as we're going through to uh, week two, with high pressure remaining quite strong and just to our east. Uh, then we go through to week three, which is the 25th through to the 1st of July, and we've got above average heights then very close to go. So an ongoing influence from high pressure, essentially, is what the CFS is telling us today, uh, an ongoing influence from above average heights. So no particularly unsettled weather coming through before the end of June, uh, with the flow of the jet going rather uh, like that. And then week four, well, look at this. We've got above average heights again, centering themselves over the top of the UK. This is the second, the second through to the 8th of July. Lots of high pressure continuing. So if this is right, we are going to have an ongoing uh, period of quite warm weather and also anticyclonic weather taking us even into the start of July. And if that comes off, then you have to start thinking a little bit about this summer turning out to be maybe a very good summer, actually. So having a look at the temperature anomalies, uh, week one temperature anomalies coming out warmer than average CFS, week two temperature anomalies are a little bit cooler. So actually, Scotland and Northern Ireland goes a bit cooler than average. England and Wales close to average with the temperature anomaly from the 18th to the 24th of June. Uh, week three, temperature anomalies look like that. So again, close to average with temperatures in week three. Week four, the 2nd to the 8th of July, uh, starts to take us back to a little bit warmer than average uh, again. So certainly nothing particularly cool coming up from a temperature uh, perspective. Finally, precipitation anomalies, CFSV2, the week ahead is generally a little bit on the drier than average side. Uh, week 2 does look a bit more unsettled though. This is the 18th to 24th of June 
and um, becoming our average to for the northwest, maybe a little bit above average with the precipitation anomalies. Week three precipitation anomalies is close to average, and then finally week four as that ridge builds strongly back over top of the country through the first week of July. We go not only significantly warmer than average, but also drier than average as well. So a little bit more changeable, yes, in the next few days, particularly towards the end of the week and uh, the start of the coming weekend. Next week, do we get that ridge building up from the southwest, or does, does it take a little bit longer to do? I suspect it may take a little bit longer, but the overall trends, I think, are there to suggest that uh, we may well get more influence from the Azores High through the second half of June, and um, it's possibly lasting to July uh, as well. So we could be setting up well, I wouldn't say a classic summer yet. It's far too early for that. But I, we could well be setting up um, quite a quite an interesting summer here now uh, with uh, the ongoing high pressure even into the beginning of July. Tomorrow, we'll have a look at the ECMWF for uh, the next 30 days. We will have a look at the ECM ensembles. And you'll also have your regular week to 10 day uh, weather forecast update as well. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.